Hey guys, it's Kenna. Welcome back to this segment of Cheapskate Crafts. And the reason I call it Cheapskate Crafts is because I don't like to pay top dollar for things to do with plants. So I'm gonna try and make these moss poles as cheaply as possible. I'll let you guys know the prices on everything and where I got them from as I go along. So first off, I'd like to say thank you to Craig Milrin with his amazing idea. I'm pretty sure that's how you say his name, Craig Milrin. He's awesome. He shows on his Instagram in a highlight how to make these moss poles and I'm just going to kind of walk through it with you guys. I absolutely love these because as your plant grows, it attaches into the pole and can grow the aerial roots to allow for bigger, healthier leaves in your plant. If you are thinking of attaching a plant to a pole, I would definitely recommend moss poles for anything with aerial roots. Anything that needs help standing up, maybe I'd say probably a twine pole or just a bamboo stick. The things that I use in this project are two foot by five foot hardwire cloth. This one is vinyl coated and galvanized steel. This I got from Home Depot for $12.98. And this kind of was an investment because you're only going to use a small amount of this or you can use the whole thing for a lot of different moss poles. You can also extend them by cutting extra and making it a little bit longer. So this could be potentially like a little under four feet. Um, I have this long fibered sphagnum moss from Home Depot and let's see the price on it was so it's seven liters. It's five thirty eight at Home Depot at least where I live in Ogden, Utah. So I used about an entire one of these when I packed a giant one full for my Monstera. I don't recommend packing it in. I recommend stuffing it like a pastry, like Craig says. I also bought standard cable ties, or I call these zip ties. I couldn't find my receipt for the four inch cable ties or zip ties, but eight inch green cable ties will be a 25 pack for about $6.02. There is a little bit of investment up front with all of these supplies just because, you know, you can't buy one of everything. Unless you contact me, then I'll try and send you guys the stuff that you need for it. When you are cutting this wire, you can use scissors, but my husband works in construction, so I have these wire cutters. Not everybody has access to these. I do believe that you can rent tools from Home Depot or Lowe's. For the sake of time, I'm not going to open this with you guys. I have some cut out already. <laughs> <laughs> but when you're cutting, I do suggest cutting the wire off of right here or it will scratch your hands. This one is my preferred size and it's 10 squares, which would mean five inches. I do recommend avoiding squishing it too much because it kind of made mine warped. I don't know if you guys can see that hopefully my plant will overrun this thing and you won't be able to see the pole. That's the deal. That's the idea. So I have it already formed into a circle just to see how big it would be, but I'm going to open it up so that it looks like this. This is loose. Sometimes you can buy it in a block and then as, as you wet it, it expands. I don't know why I prefer this stuff. Maybe it's because I can choose how much I want without having to tear apart the block because sometimes I'll get too much. So I'm going to add some of this to the bowl. In fact, I might do whatever's left in this bag. Be careful not to breathe in the dust. It's uncomfortable. I'm going to add water and it doesn't matter how much water because we're going to wring it out as we go. Let me go get more water. There you go. I'm wetting this so that it's easily compactable inside of the metal wire. So you don't have to make it sopping wet. In fact, we're going to wring it out like we would a rag that you wash your kitchen table with. Just for reference. <laughs> you don't want it to be too full or it kind of makes it hard on the roots that you're putting on your pole. I'm just taking pieces of it, wringing it out and adding it in. And it will get tighter as we cinch it up with the zip ties. 
And don't worry about pieces sticking out. You can clean it up later or leave it fuzzy looking. So I'm adding all the way up to the top over here. I'm not gonna go all the way to the end at the bottom of the pole, just in case I want to put it in soil. I may actually use this one for a plant with LECA. Stay tuned for repotting in the future. Just a couple handfuls is good for this entire pole. Okay, there's some spots that are a little less full than others, so I'm just going in and filling those up. Okay, and here we are. So now, this may trigger some people's OCD, <laughs> but I'm going to do it every five, and it's going to have an odd number at the bottom when I cinch it up. OCD warning, trigger warning. So I'm going to start at the top, and all I'm doing is lacing it through like you're tying a, a shoelace, and then you pull it, and it's not going to go all the way tight yet just because you're not gonna be able to pull it all the way tight unless you get the other ones on. I need a little bit more moss at the top. Ooh, just flung it everywhere. <laughs> this stick is really long. The whole handful was mostly stick. That's the problem with long fibered. Even though it's really good for your plant, it's hard to work with sometimes. <laughs> so you can either push it a little bit more now so that it can the zip tie can click or you can just do all of them at once and then cinch them up So now that I've gotten all my zip ties on there, I am going to tighten all of them. And this is where you'll really see if you have any uh, moss that needs added in. Here we are. Now I'm gonna cut it off just so that we don't snag ourselves. But some people use twist ties, then that way when they need to, they can open it up and put a pole in there, some kind of wood stick or rebar or whatever you wanna try, just so that it doesn't get flimsy or if you need to put a really heavy plant on it, it's totally maker's choice. And then what I'm doing is I'm taking these and twisting them around where they can't scratch me. And then it just kind of digs into the pole. There we go. They're a little bit less noticeable now. Um, if you'd like to use green, you totally can. I just didn't have them at my store near me and I was really impatient and wanted to make them now. So <laughs> this is how you make a moss pole. So now I would recommend sticking it in the pot before the soil and then so fill it up one third of the pot with this in it and then add your plant and then finish potting. So if you have a plant that trails, I would attach it below the node every so often just to get it to attach and grow its aerial roots inside. General care for your moss pole is pretty easy. What you want to do is make sure that it's never in a dark, dank room because it can grow mold. In order to avoid the mold, you want to make sure that it's in bright sunlight. It can be an indirect or direct whatever you prefer, whatever your plant prefers actually. In order to keep those aerial roots from getting overwatered, you just water it as often as you would water your plant itself. If you put it in the shower and just hose it down, this will get wet pretty easy. Otherwise you can use a watering can, but it does take some time because if you just pour water over dry moss, it kind of flows off of it and doesn't soak the pole. So pouring it slowly will help it to all seep in there. 
Um, just remember it is okay if this dries out and it's okay if it stays moist. It doesn't, it shouldn't stay wet, but it doesn't have to be dry and it doesn't have to be moist. You know, you have some creative freedom with this thing. Just try to see what works for each individual plant because there's not one rule for every plant. If you guys have any questions about this, let me know or even contact Craig Milren. He's awesome. Or I know Planted in Provo. She's an amazing, amazing account. And she's actually who I found this idea from. And then I started following Craig. So if you guys have any questions about how to do this, let me know. I'm at I'm fond of you on Instagram and you can always message me or leave something in the comments and let me know how yours turned out. If you'd like to see more content, be sure to hit the subscribe button and the bell button so that you get notifications every time I post. I usually post every Thursday. That's all for now. We'll see you guys next week. Where's my clicker?